With all that being said, we will go ahead and get started with ports. So Scott, if you want to come off mute and take it away. Sure. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Uh, my name is Scott Shepard, and my title is K-12 Access Project Coordinator, and I work for California State Parks. And you might be wondering, what is ports? Uh, a lot of the time we hear people saying, like, doesn't that have something to do with boats or the ocean or something? Um, but essentially, PORTS stands for Parks Online Resources for Teachers and Students. And you may not know it, but we're already a free resource that's available to you and your students right now. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the services that we provide, the resources that are available to you as far as virtual field trips to California State Parks all across the state. And uh, hopefully I'll have a chance to answer some of your questions as well. So if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, so I could tell you all about ports, uh, but this is a video that was shot in 2004. So it's pretty old, but it's still really relevant and it still really helps to tell this story. And it shows you uh, just about how long we've been providing these kinds of experiences to K-12 students. So if you could go ahead and uh, show that. Well, I'm sure that a lot of you folks on uh, the webinar today or on this live today are aware of California State Parks, but you might not know that we have over 280 California State Parks from the Oregon border all the way down to the Mexico border. Uh, we steward more than 300 miles of California coastline. We have opportunities for people to engage and recreate and learn in our outdoor spaces and uh, I come from a teaching background, so uh, we'll try this video one more time. But really, I see our parks as phenomenon. Uh, and you don't need to rewind because I'm kind of giving you the spiel. Um, okay. But yeah, we see our parks as phenomenon and an incredible opportunity to just inspire curiosity in your students and leverage that phenomenon for you know great, deep, deep and meaningful learning experiences. So let's take it away this time. Opportunities, as well as diverse and dedicated workforces, and world-class educational prospects. Through this network, we can bring state parks to students with interactive digital video, digital pictures, audio files, documents, and an array of other materials. With the DCP network, children sitting in a classroom in downtown Los Angeles can participate in a guided tour of the State Capitol Museum, although they may never be able to travel there. Children in an Oakland classroom may hear and see state park scuba divers as they explore the wonders of an underwater park off the coast of Orange County. Rangers in the so heart of we can pause it right there. A field of so you can see kind of what we've been doing uh, since those monitors that you just saw on screen were cool is we've been providing distance learning opportunities for students in California state parks all across the state. And, uh, you know, the biggest barrier to access that we find is that teachers just aren't aware of this resource. So we came about to try and increase equitable and sustainable access to California state parks. And that's what my role as K-12 Access Project Coordinator is all about. Um, and we really saw the opportunity to use video conferencing early on as a way to connect students directly with parks. You can go ahead to the next slide. Wildflowers located. Let's see. Awesome. So again, this is really a flagship resource of California State Parks. We've been doing it since before distance learning. And around 670,000 students, and that's grown significantly over the course of just the past year alone. We've served well over 150,000 students, and we're able to do that from over 40 California State Parks from all across the state, spanning topics involving California history, science, and so much more. Um, so if you go to the next slide, please. Another uh, person on the call with us today is going to really give you an idea of how easy it is to sign up. But like I was saying before, we've served so many different students all across uh, the state, all across the country, all across the world. We have a variety of different programs that are available to you. Our on-demand programs, which is kind of like an Airbnb, you can just go ahead, select a time that works best for you and connect with your students live with an interpreter in a park outside, exploring those natural, cultural, and historic resources. You can jo join home learning programs, which are a lot like this live today, where we have live streams from all across the state of California that are available to a thousand students per webinar. And we oftentimes have those go live to our YouTube channel as well. 
We have a multitude of online curated resources that over the span of our growth and evolution as uh, the ports program has been splattered all across the internet. And we also have curated previous broadcasts that we've done through our home learning platform pro uh, program. So if you go to the next slide, I mentioned we have, oh, we can skip that one because I think somebody's going to be talking a little bit more about that in a little bit. Um, but I mentioned some of these online curated resources. There are so many of them that we've been able to put together and that we've put together in partnership with organizations like Flipgrid, where we have over 350 different topics that relate to a variety of different resources. Uh, we partner really closely with California Educators Together and the Smithsonian Learning Labs to provide spaces where teachers can not only design learning experiences, but they can facilitate them as well using a multitude of resources from across the internet. Um, and we've started to develop new innovative VR and AR experiences, which you can download right now. If you have an iPhone or if you have any kind of smartphone, you can download the Dive Into Point Lobos app where you can literally dive into a VR AR experience of what it's like to explore underwater at Point Lobos State Natural Reserve. Um, next slide, please. So I mentioned my role as K-12 Access Project Coordinator, and we're not just trying to inspire uh, equitable and sustainable access to California State Parks, but we're really trying to reimagine what it means to take a field trip to a California State Park. Uh, I participated in field trips to California State Park as a kid where we went and made candles and pet a donkey and met a blacksmith and those were wonderful and amazing and I loved them. But we really want to try and see how we can make field experiences to California State Park a more rich, deep, meaningful and integrated part of students learning both in and outside the classroom. And we're exploring that in collaboration with an organization called Q, which you may have heard of. It stands for Computer Using Educators. Uh, and we also are partnering with our new nonprofit, statewide nonprofit, Parks California. These are some of the goals that we've outlined as a part of this project. So as you see there, we have funding for in-person field trips. We really want to try and accomplish blended access as soon as we can, but we recognize that there's all kinds of barriers to access right now with COVID-19. And uh, as we look to the future, I want to be a resource to you. I showed my contact information earlier on, but I'll go ahead and drop it as an announcement in the chat and then I'm going to pass it on to the next presenter. So thank you guys so much for the opportunity to share today. Thank you, Scott. That was a great presentation. So lots of information. Scott Nunes, our ed tech coach, has been posting some links and information in the chat. So definitely check that out. And uh, thanks for the shout out to Q. Scott, we actually have two of our local CCQ board members on this call as well. Scott Nunes, our ed tech coach, happens to be a board member for CCQ. And Matthew Ketchum, our director, is actually the treasurer for that group as awesome. well. Awesome. That's wonderful. So, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, guys... I'll also be presenting at... Oh, sorry, Alexandra, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll also be presenting <laughs> at Spring Q this weekend on Saturday uh, to really talk more about this Passports project and what it means to reimagine the K-12 school field trip. So I'd love to see anybody on this call at that session if you're attending. All right, awesome. Yeah, Any if you guys are going to Spring Q this weekend virtually, definitely look for Scott's session. Thank you, Scott. Up next, we have our own Yumi Soares with us. And Yumi will be talking about actually doing one of these virtual field trips with her students. So Yumi, if you're ready, go ahead. All right. Hello, I'm Yumi Soros. I'm a computer literacy teacher and myself and Matthew Ketchum coordinated a virtual field trip for our fourth through sixth graders here at Wilson. So next slide. So as uh, Mr. Shepard mentioned before, there's various ports on demand programs. Next slide or is it frozen? There we go. Um, from immigration history at Angel Island to um, monarch butterflies and sea otter adaptation for our primary grades. And I was thinking with the intermediate grades, um, the gold rush and pioneer living. And for our junior high and high school kids, perhaps the art and science at Hearst Castle. Next slide. 
And the process was super easy. So once you select the on-demand program, you will notice um, it will tell you exactly what grade level it would fit, um, approximately how long the program is, and just a little summary of what they are going to cover. Next slide. And then all you have to do is basically select the date and time. Next slide. And we actually received a confirmation within a week. It was that easy. So basically what um, California Port Ports sent to us was basically some information. So you'll notice um, right there towards the bottom, it says download the teacher's guide so you can front load some information prior to your virtual field trip. And then they also provided student journals, which I had my teachers print and have science journals for the kids to participate in, which um, had vocabulary, area for them to sketch some plants, Venn diagrams for them to compare and contrast, and as well as personal journaling. Next slide. And so what I did was um, probably a week before I went over the rules about teams meeting norms because that's the platform we used. And um, what I really want to emphasize is coming prepared. So I want to make sure the kids have their journals, pencils, crayons, colored pencils. And if for some reason they were disconnected from the actual platform, they, they can just go back in without any delay. Next slide. So with the, um, it was all live stream. The kids were so engaged. They love the interpreter. Um, she actually found a plant, talked about the pickle weed, um, asked them inquiry based questions like, I wonder what this reminds you of. I noticed it did this. So it was it was great um, because of the fact that she was in the elements and they were using the students were responding and using their academic language, which was so helpful. Um, next slide. And lastly, I just want to say Scott pretty much touched on everything, but it was super easy to schedule. There's multiple of classes available. Information is emailed to us within a week. Um, it was really engaging for all the scholars and their parents because they they were also in on the virtual field trip and it was only 45 minutes. And can you imagine um, once we we are out of this, um, we can actually go on the virtual field trip because of the fact that, you know, it's not that often we can get on the bus and go to the Tijuana estuary. So anyways, that is my presentation. Thank you all and it's free. All right, thank you, Yumi. Free is one of, I think, teacher's favorite words. And I just want to take a moment um, to say that I actually sat in on that field trip and he was kind enough to send out a link that the tech department gets it in on and it was really neat. It was really neat to see how engaged the students were. It was a part of California. I personally haven't been able to see either. Um, so it was, it was really valuable and I definitely encourage you to check that out for your for your students.